Hello, during this session I'm going to be talking about Hubble's law and the expansion of the universe. Now, um, mentioned previously as evidence for the Big Bang, it was recognised that, and this was first observed by Slyther and Humanson, that it appears the spectrum of a nearby galaxy compared to the spectrum of a distant galaxy is different. In fact, uh, if we look to all the nearby galaxies compared to more distant galaxies, they all seem to have uh, shifted to longer wavelengths. And this is the redshifting. Okay. Now, what happened was uh, the mystery of the redshift was looked into by uh, Edwin Hubble, and he measured the redshift in many galaxies and also measured their distance to them. So he then defined the redshift as the change in wavelength of some feature, so the change in wavelength divided by its normal wavelength. So he came up with this value of z was delta wavelength divided by wavelength, or observed wavelength minus normal wavelength divided by normal wavelength. So this was how he defined redshift. And what he did is he plotted redshift against the distance, and he found something interesting. When he plotted these two features, he found that, uh, as shown with each star representing a galaxy, there was a clear linear correlation. So the redshift of a galaxy correlates to its distance. The further away is the higher the redshift, and this became known as Hubble's law. Now, he thought about it a little bit more and recognized that this, the redshift should be equal to the recession velocity divided by the speed of light. So if we think back to uh, when we're doing calculations with the Doppler shift uh, using electromagnetic spectrum, it's kind of based on that. So therefore, the graph evolves a little bit to showing velocity of recession versus distance uh, shows a positive linear relationship. This positive linear relationship can then be shown by a, a simple equation. Velocity equals the gradient of the line times distance. And the gradient of this line became known as Hubble's constant. So Hubble's constant is presently thought to be 72 times 10 to the 3 meters per second per megaparsec. Okay, so that's the, the gradient we have at this moment in time. Notice the distance is measured in megaparsecs and the velocity of recession in meters per second. Okay, so this is interesting and very, very useful. So let's think about how useful this can be. Uh, for a start, this explains why this close galaxy has a certain spectrum, and then this distance galaxy, which is very similar, but has a further redshifted spectrum. That's because it has a greater precession velocity. It's moving away from us at greater speed. So Hubble was famous for identifying that most galaxies light was shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Most, not all, because there can be some motion of galaxies, uh, which uh, means observations can be slightly different. But you also notice the further away a galaxy was, the more its light was redshifted. So from this, you could draw some conclusions. First of all, that most galaxies were moving away from our own. The further away a galaxy was moving, the faster it was moving, and therefore, it must be clear that the universe is expanding. So again, we think about the analogy of being on a balloon. And if you're on a point on a balloon, you'll see all the other points on the balloon surface to be moving away from you. And that indicates that there is a form of expansion, but in a dimension beyond the two dimensions which you think about as being the surface of the balloon. So what does Hubble's law tell us? So assuming the expansion of the universe is constant, uh, it means we can look back and we can work out uh, an upper age limit for the universe. So we can do this by recognizing the length of the universe is one divided by Hubble's constant. So this is one divided by 72 times 10 to the three meters per second per megaparsec. Now clearly, 
there's not a clear unit there, so we're going to do some changing of our units. First of all, we're going to uh, convert into parsecs. And then we're going to convert into meters. And then we see the meters and the meters are, are going to be able to cancel out. That should be meters to the minus one. And give me a final answer as 4.29 times 10 to the 17 seconds, which is 13.6 times 10 to the 9 years. So about 14 billion years ago. So Hubble's law allows us to give some idea of the upper age limit of the universe. That's useful. There's also another feature, something called the cosmic scale factor. So let me explain this. As the universe expands, all the distances are stretched with what is something known as the cosmic scale factor, which is R. Now, the cosmic scale factor, when a distance light was emitted, is different to the cosmic scale factor which we have now. So we have something which is known as RO. RO is the cosmic scale factor when light was emitted, and R is the cosmic scale factor which we're experiencing at this moment in time. So this argument means that the stretching of the universe is causing the redshifting and not the galaxies moving themselves. So therefore, we can extend this idea and recognize that the change in cosmic scale factor from the original to now is divided by the original cosmic scale factor of when light was emitted should be the same as the ratio of the changing wavelength divided by the original wavelength, which is equal to the redshift. So that means the most important bit here is redshift equals, go back there, is equal to the cosmic scale factor divided by the original cosmic scale factor minus one. So we have another way of doing calculations, and we can use this tool to do some further calculations, as I'm going to show you in a minute. So my example question. A distance quasar is detected to have a redshift value of 5.6. Calculate the speed at which the quasar is currently moving relative to the Earth, and then estimate the ratio of the current size of the universe to its size when the quasar was emitted, photons were detected. Okay. So the first... Part A is going to use Hubble's law, and part B, you're going to see, is going to use uh, the cosmic size factor. So how do we do this? Well, if we know that the redshift equals 5.6, the redshift is also equal to the recession velocity divided by the speed of light, so therefore the velocity is equal to 5.6 times the speed of light. Now, uh, that 5.6 times the speed of light, I know nothing can move faster than the speed of light. There's some issues there, but as an example, that's our number. Uh, then if we think about uh, the cosmic scale factor, so what we can see here is R divided by RO minus 1 equals 5.6. This means that R divided by R original equals 6.6. .6. And therefore RO, which is the original, the smaller size, divided by R is going to equal to 1 divided by 6.6, .6, which equals 0 0.15. So therefore the universe it's approximately 15% of its current size when the light is emitted, because we're looking back in time. So that's Hubble's law and some of the calculations around it. I hope that was useful.